Hi guys, it's Peter and welcome to our channel. Well, here I got my Atari STE 1040. If you saw my previous video, you know it's up and running. But today I'd like to open it. Upgraded RAM from 1 megabyte to 4. Also, I'd like to clean its keyboard because it's kind of nasty. And it's going to do retro brightness for key. The housing, it looks pretty bad. But to be honest, the shape of a housing, it's not my uh, style. Well, it actually it looks pretty good. Few things I'd like to kind of reshape it. And basically, if I'm reshaping a housing, I will repaint it anyway. Uh, all around, like I said, I kind of like it. Uh, the biggest disappointment, probably, that's every... Atari user and they, and, and they can tell you up front those ports they are not in the best spot it's probably in the worst spot you can imagine but all around like I said it's it's pretty good uh, 16 32 bit uh, computer or so I mean it's depend how, how, how you look at but for me I was saying if there's a good games I will buy a system and this Atari uh, 1040 is not exception, especially I do have a uh, few Amigas, well actually more than a few Amigas, and I really like the Amigas as well, and well, let's let's open it and see, uh, let's install it RAM, pretty much, to open it uh, system, there's a, uh, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and those three, I believe it looks like it's mounted a flappy or so. Pretty much seven sc uh, screws. Actually, inside, it doesn't look too bad. I kind of expected the key keyboard's gonna be dirty. Here it looks like something has been spit over or so. It's got some corrosion residue. It's kind of understandable, it's what, 30 years old computer. Yeah, also. The keyboard wires looks all right. The keyboard itself is so nasty and dirty. But on the back side actually looks uh, kind of neat. Uh, I thought I, I will see some uh, uh, metal reinforcement or so. No, it doesn't have any metal. Well, it's got little a little bitty here part that that's uh, those connectors what I was talking about it's kind of nightmare to plug it in plug it out or so well let's let's open it where the RAM is and here well look like this cover it covers what power supply oh you know what yeah and there's a RAM okay let's let's do that I mean, the metal shielding, besides the corrosion, there's not much dust or so. Well, here's got some also residue, some kind, uh, probably, like I said, when it's been spill, spilled something, it probably did get on that corner as well. Okay guys, unbelievable, to hold that little cover, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, six screws. To hold it upper shell, it was holding by seven screws or so. They put so many screws, I'm not really see oh, what's the point is. I mean, well, it's uh, kind of understandable on the one hand, they try to make it as it's, it's sturdy as possible. But in my opinion, I kind of feel like it's a little overkill. Another thing I'd like to mention, it looks like this system been open probably more than once or so. Because all those tabs, they've already been straightened. Then here one screw is missing and that, that this tab, the and the bracket, it's bent. This uh, over here one screw is missing. Yeah, someone did open it before and I'm pretty sure more than once. Yeah. Well, let's... 
I was about to say let's pull it out memory, but now I lo it looks like I will have to remove the whole cover too. And that that's gonna be is not a straightforward. You know what? Maybe I can pull it out memory without removing that cap. If I'm using a tiny screwdriver or so, I may do it. It's kind of doable, looks like. Okay, guys. Basically, new memory SIM uh, board is there. The way I remove it, old one, you, I mean, you already saw it with screwdriver. I kind of doesn't recommend that way, the way I did. Because over here it's really, really tight. And it's not really the uh, best way to do. But it's doable. I just didn't want to take the whole whole uh, metal cover apart. I mean, out. Because I have to remove the floppy. And I have to remove the power supply. Uh, speaking about power supply. Actually, power supply looks good. I mean, uh, capacitor is not bulging or anything like that. Okay, guys. Since we're done with memory, let's put it uh, Atari itself on the side. And and now it's time to take care of the uh, keyboard. Uh, let me grab it my cap puller. Oh, actually the cap puller is, it fits straight forward. And there's no additional spring. Speaking about keyboard, I thought also I want to mention it. I mean, I like it the way it... Uh, well, kind of feels a little bit too mushy, but uh, all around I kind of like it, especially those functional key, uh, the kind of diamond style. But that shape, it looks cool, but it doesn't, it doesn't, I'm not saying that doesn't work the way it should be. It works fine, but because the shape is too big, it's doing, it's making like a wobble in here, you see, because I mean, it's too wide and too wobbly. If it's key much shorter, it will still wobble as much, but it will be not noticeable. Look at it. Yeah. Otherwise, like I said, I mean, no complaint. No complaints about key. Well, let's start remove them. And then we will clean board. I mean, the clean uh, plastic itself and retro brighter key okay guys i almost done removing all keys actually those diamond keys i mean you can grab it uh, puller and pull, uh, also uh, remove it but that, because they are big you just can grab it and remove it by hand so easy well the board like i said i mean the main uh, chassis is kind of dirty and yucky I was gonna clean it, also gonna key, clean it key. Uh, cleaning is kind of simple. Two brush, soap, and we'll hot water will do a trick. But about the retro brightness, that's a little bit different. Well, there's only a few ways uh, how you can do it. Pretty much all keys go in a zip bag. Then I'm using, I always using kind of few spoons of, uh, of this guy, 40 volume, and it works pretty good. And rest, I will fill it up with hydro peroxide. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, pretty much, I did clean it uh, base plate. I also uh, take it apart, clean it uh, rubber uh, contacts. That that did take uh, quite quite some time. Uh, retro brighter the key. Key now looks almost good as new. I probably was gonna say maybe 95% or so. It come back to that nice uh, bright color. Yeah, now it's gonna be well. Now I have to put key keycaps back on the keyboard, and that's gonna take time. I will be back when I'm done. Okay, guys, I'm pretty much I'm done with keyboard, and actually I did decided to remove it a ref shielding to inspect it uh, main board and see how well capacitor looks. And of course we will have to remove it all screws. First, we will have to remove the power supply, floppy drive. Uh, before we start removing the power supply, since power supply is open, if you did to use it to your equipment uh, not too long, you should give it probably at least 24 hours. 
to make sure all capacitor will be charged by itself. Otherwise, you have to be really, really careful working with power supply because it has uh, high voltage there and can make shock you pretty bad. Uh, yeah, and like I said, it's pretty much straightforward. Okay guys, finally I got a uh, motherboard and that it did take me quite some time to pull it out. I'm quite surprised how well it put together and some hand is, in some way it's probably a little overkill. Too much metal, too much screws. If comparing to Amigas, Amigas is uh, to take it apart much much simple and uh, the main board looks really nice super super clean no dust at all wow it's really unbelievable but the thing is this system been opened before probably multiple times and most, most likely the board been cleaned by previous owner uh, because oh, the screw i got one more screw because uh, there's no way it can be that's original condition super super clean unbelievable uh well we did install it already four megabyte of ram and actually install it ram the way right now i mean when it's open it's much simple than the way i did um, the bottom uh plate with uh, paper cardboard uh, isolation you can tell i mean it's nice and clean never been uh, any kind of moisture or residues the metal itself looks pretty good it has a lot of scratches it's a little bit bent and oh there, there's also supposed to be one screw over here uh, that's gonna make much harder to remove it yeah power supply look like it's already been removed by previous owner uh, let's see this plate look like being butchered uh, i mean really bad it's got all kind of bends and uh, but otherwise still still intact uh one more thing that uh, metal is so sharp be careful around when you're working because it has a sharp corners it almost a uh, razor blade sharp material i mean plate you have to be really careful to not hurt yourself uh, power supply looks all around pretty good original caps yeah, the power supply ne probably ne never been work on. I mean, I'm not see w uh, the reason why why you should work. I mean, for previous owner probably he didn't bother. In my case, uh, most likely I'm gonna convert it to a different power supply because that's too twenty. And uh, here in the United States we got what one ten or so. Actually, this capacitor, yeah, these capacitors, actually they both slightly slightly bulging. It doesn't have cracks, no sign of leakage, but when you touch it, you can feel it, especially this one. I'm not sure if camera is going to pick it up, but you, you can feel it, it's bulging. Uh, well, at least uh, I don't see any uh, urgent uh, repair need to be done. Like I said, the board looks really, really nice. All connectors looks like intact. When you hold in board and, and uh, tilting back and forth or twisting a little bit, you can hear it squeaking. It's normal because probably those uh, chips it's making sound because it's it's sucketable. Uh, capacitors, like I said, on the board looks pretty good. No sign of leakage, but they're two three years old, and most likely I'm gonna I'm gonna order it a replacement. Yeah, the board most likely been clean because those connectors, see guys, it's it's still dusty. Yeah, but everything else is nice and clean. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, uh, now we're gonna put it back together. Uh, to put it back, pretty much it's kind of in a reverse order. 
and then we will i mean when i when i'm done with uh, assembling i'm gonna plug it in and we will see if the ram is working properly well see you then Okay guys, let's run it as sysinfo and see if we got 4 megabyte available right now. Let's see, there you go. Now we have to change uh, resolution because the sysinfo doesn't run on a low, a low resolution. At least need me medium or oh, double click. Doesn't work the way I expected. Now it's moment of truth. Why I'm saying that because the RAM is uh, for Mac, but the seller also stated it will work on Amiga, and it does. Right there, it's uh, 4096 bytes. Well, now it's uh, my Atari STE. It's getting better and better. Uh, task system I got right now uh, 1.62. Uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna upgrade it to a higher number. Uh, it sounds like 1.62. It's probably the most suitable for gaming. And that's what I mostly is gonna use it for gaming. Uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me guys in the comments. I will really appreciate. Well, uh, pretty much that's all I got for this video. I hope it was uh, kind of helpful, enjoyable. If you guys did enjoy it, thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any future videos, subscribe. We will really appreciate it. Thank you.